Welcome back to the Neuroscience Meets Social and Emotional Learning Podcast for episode number 159. With Dr. Michael Roussel, a teacher, psychologist, and professor emeritus at Southern Oregon University, who has studied how random events transform us. After studying formative events, which are moments that define us or strongly influence us, for over three decades, Michael Roussel discovered that most of them took place during a spark of surprise and serve as a mechanism to instantly change our beliefs. I'm Andrea Samadhi, author and educator from Toronto, Canada, now in Arizona, and like many of our listeners have been fascinated with learning and understanding the science behind high performance strategies in our schools, our sports and workplace environments with ideas that we can all use, understand and implement immediately. In today's episode, we'll speak with Michael Roussel about his new book, The Power of Surprise, How Your Brain Secretly Changes Your Beliefs. Michael will show us how surprising events produce invisible influence because they open a window to spontaneous belief change with no warning or conscious awareness. You'll see how a seemingly minor feature of surprise can be devised to strategically enrich someone's life, personally or in the workplace, and create positive mindsets for students or employees while maximizing your influence for those in leadership roles. You can dive deeper into the power of surprise by watching Michael's TED Talk or getting his new book, and I'll tell you more about that at the end of the podcast and show you how today's listeners can grab a 30% discount to his book. Here's what people are saying about Michael Roussel's new book. Dr. Andrew Newberg, who we've had on the podcast, said his book is a fascinating read, chock full of lots of truly novel information and ideas, a must read for anyone interested in enriching their lives and finding new ways to expand their mind. And Jonah Berger, the New York Times bestselling author of three books, The Catalyst, Contagious and Invisible Influence, said it's a fascinating book. The power of surprise shows what most of us miss about moments that change us. In today's episode, you'll learn what happens in the brain when we experience surprise, why random events transform us, and how they secretly change our beliefs, and how to use this understanding of surprise at the brain level to enrich or transform someone else's life dramatically and instantly, whether you're in the workplace or in a classroom environment. As you're listening to this episode, I encourage you to think about where surprise has shown up in your life. Has someone ever said something to you that caught your attention and made you think? What did you do with this new information? Did you use it? Did that moment change or transform you in some way, like Jonah Berger's testimonial offered? Or did you just dismiss it, never to think about it again? And finally, have you wondered what just happened there? I hope we can dive a bit deeper and see if we can uncover some meaning behind the element of surprise in your life and offer you a framework so that you can intentionally impact those around you on a deeper level with the power of surprise. Let's meet Michael Roussel. Welcome, Michael. It's wonderful to see you again. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. And I know that it was kind of crazy. We set up this interview months ago and August seems so far away. I thought it's never gonna come, but look how time flies. Welcome, thanks for being here today. Oh, thanks, Andrea. Thanks for inviting me to the show. I've been looking forward to this. I listened to your show and I love the, the, the practical nature of it and the way you uh, treat your guests. I'm oh. ready. Thank you. This is going to be fun. This is a great topic. And and I know that if we can all think about it, we can come up with a time in our life where we experienced a surprise that had a profound impact on us. And I know you asked me, you know, have you had any surprises that really shifted you or made you think? And But some of us don't even really think deeply about something like this. We plan surprise parties and we love those surprise gifts. But what makes a surprise so special? Well, that's a great question and a great way to start. <clears throat> and 
surprises, uh, the kind of surprises that we're most familiar with. When I ask uh, people, what do you think of when you think of a surprise? They think of surprise parties. They, uh, they think of a time when they saw something that surprised them, like maybe a, 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 an animal that they didn't think could uh, jump. Or uh, for instance, I was looking at a bug the other day and I thought, well, this is a fascinating bug. And all of a sudden it flew off and it surprised me. So when it surprised me, I instantly formed a new belief. Oh, well, that bug can fly. And so that's typically what surprises do. You form a new belief. For instance, if a friend was uh, you thought was in Europe and they showed up while you were drinking a coffee at Starbucks or wherever, and uh, you'd turn around, you'd be surprised. Whoa, I thought you were in Europe. So you'd get this big surprise and it would change your belief. I guess you're home now. It instantly changes surprises, uh, create um, moments that instantly change your belief. Now, uh, we all know that um, and we all experience that. But what I found out through my research and my research was on formative moments. You know, those moments where something happens and you change how you think about yourself. I call those formative moments. And uh, I researched those. I had several hundred examples. I wrote a book on it in 2007, how spontaneous events change your life. And uh, one day I'm reading all these moments and uh, these great stories, and I had a little epiphany. Oh my goodness, most of these stories that took place to change pe how people thought about themselves changed during a moment of surprise. And that surprised me. It was, it was a bit of an epiphany. And now I, and now I knew these are the triggers. This is the catalyst <clears throat> for moments of change. Got it. And so, what drew your attention to study this? So you you found out, you know, most people have these profound epiphanies during a surprise. Did you have one of these experiences? Well, I did. We all have these experiences regularly. Well, we all have surprise moments that change us, but because we don't tend to think of surprise as a developmental moment, we normally just skip right by it. But I remember a time um, when I was in high school and uh, I didn't do well in school. I have two learning disabilities. I had a reading disability that I later found out was dyslexia. And I also had attention deficit disorder, hyperactivity. And um, so you can imagine what kind of student I was, one that drove teachers nuts. Well, uh, I didn't like school very much. I hated school. I thought it was more like a prison. So one day in my uh, 12th year, my final year of education, um, a substitute teacher shows up and says, and he's, he's addressing this class of 30 males in a health class. And he says, uh, all right, everybody, what are you going to do when you graduate? And, uh, you know, it's a substitute teacher. It's near the end of the year. So we all just ignored him. So finally, he said, uh, hey, uh, I need your attention. And then he points to me, and he's got his uh, little name tag in front of him. He says, Rossell, what are you going to do once you graduate? And I said, eh, nothing much. I don't care. Uh, I'll just kind of hang out, get a job. He said, no, really, Rossell, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you graduate? Well, I kind of had a psychotic break. I stood up and I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've been in school for 12 years. Teachers hate me. I hate school. Schools are like prisons. I'm going to, I'm going to go on every TV show. I'm going to go on every radio broadcast. I'm going to go to every newspaper and tell people what's really going on in schools. And he looked at me and he said, oh, well, Rossell, if you want to change education, you'll have to do it from the inside. You'll have to become a teacher. Wow. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that that was a moment that changed me until several years later when I couldn't find a way in my life. And uh, someone said, why don't you become a teacher? Bang, epiphany. And that ordained my career in education that's now 40 years plus. That's wild. I love that. That's such a good story. I didn't know that. Thank you.
but yeah. but we all experience stories like these and, and I've been collecting them for a long time and it was only recently within the last five years that I realized it was the element of surprise that triggered those formative moments. So does emotion have anything to do with it, right? And yeah, I can see it on your face. You remember how it felt. Does emotion play into it at all? Or is it like, what, what is going on when you have that moment? You're like, what just happened? What is it? Okay, well, this is the fascinating part because uh, if you see a, a frog suddenly fly away, you're gonna go, what the heck just happened? You'd be surprised and you'd form a new belief frogs can fly. Now you would go to the internet and try to find out what kind of a frog that was. You'd chase that frog down to see if the frog was somewhere uh, to see if you could make it fly again. You, you, you'd try to verify your surprise, your new belief. Now, if you, um, <clears throat> if someone surprises you with a belief about yourself, for instance, if someone says, hey, you're an educator and you didn't think you were much of a teacher or you, you didn't see that self as part of your um, repertoire of aptitudes and then that surprised you, well, how do, how do you verify that? When, you, when surprises happen to you, we, uh, to your self-image, you instantly search for verification through confirmation bias. It's like you have your own personal Google search. If somebody says, hey, you're the best teacher I ever had, and you never thought of yourself as a teacher, you instantly scan like a Google search, your entire repertoire of behaviors and think, mm hmm, oh yeah, oh yeah, there it is. Now this happens all in a few milliseconds. It's not like you have an aha experience, but anytime someone surprises you, the verification process is your own personal Google search. That's so interesting. And so I've been, you know, thinking about it a little bit. So, so, so one of the, the surprises that happened to me, yeah, it had to do with the fact that I talked to you about it before. Someone said, you know, by the way, when you introduce yourself on the podcast and you say you're a former educator, I don't see you that way. I see you as an educator. I'm a principal and I'm using your podcast to educate my schools. And so then my head went back and did a Google search to, oh yeah, so just because I'm not an educator in the US, I was in Toronto, so now I can change it. And now I say, this is Andrea, I'm an educator formerly from Toronto, now in Arizona. So that's the process my brain went through. What, what if I didn't believe, you know, because I don't have a teaching degree in the US, you know, is there some place where I would have dismissed it and, and thought, well, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. Is there something that happens like that? Well, um, let's, let's just travel back to, the, to, to that actual moment that you, that you experienced because it, it, it really exemplifies what's going on neurologically in the mind. So if I could use that as an example, would that be okay, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So um, when, uh, a surprise from a neurological point of view is an error signal. Anytime you're surprised, it means your expectations, how you see the world, how you understand yourself or how you fit into it suddenly don't work. Now, from an ancestral point of view, our when our ancestors, our primitive ancestors were surprised, that usually meant imminent danger or immense opportunity. So if you thought about it, you probably didn't survive. And so uh, those who acted instantly formed a new belief survived. And that's what we left, that's what we're left with. That's, that's our part of our ancestral heritage. Learning instantly during a moment of surprise is uh, part of our cognitive predisposition. So what happened to you is when that person surprised you, uh, the neurological part of a surprise is called phasic dopamine. Now, phasic dopamine means there's two phases. Phase one is bang, stop, pay attention, something really important is going on. Phase two is learn instantly. Now, phase one takes a few milliseconds. It's that moment of what? And phase two is the formation of a new belief. And this is all done by dopamine. Dopamine says, 
uh, and as we know, dopamine is, is not their uh, reward chemical. It's a motivation neural, neural transmitter. So now that, uh, now that you've got this new belief, oh yeah, I am an educator. Dopamine, it, it will draw you towards thinking and screening your experiences to say, yeah, oh, there it is. Oh yeah, there it is. And so that's how uh, dopamine works. That's the neurological part of surprise. And then once you got this basic dopamine working, and now what happens is um, you'll you'll see what you do through the lens of I'm an educator. That's interesting. So what about some examples of how we could use this in the classroom or in the workplace? I know you've got these elements you can uh, recreate them to help people boost their self-esteem and make them feel like winners and transform their lives. Can you give some examples of that? Right. Uh, there's there's lots of examples, uh, but first I want I wanted this I wanted to explain or what I want to describe. One of my beliefs is that uh, we all have positive beliefs, we all have negative beliefs, and our negative beliefs are usually the result of something someone has said to us and given us some limiting belief uh, or imposed some limiting belief on us. Uh, a positive belief we have is actually our true self. Positive beliefs are indications of some aptitudes or ideas or skills that we have. Those are our positive beliefs. So we are our positive beliefs, limiting beliefs are just impositions others have put on us. So I think once we understand that, when we talk to students, we, we and if those in the business for employees or if, if you're a coach to your athletes, uh, it's really important to make sure that you frame everything in the positive. You're trying to build beliefs, not destroy or limit them. So you asked me to give you some examples about, uh, sir, uh, about moments where we can use surprise to create functional beliefs and actually enrich people's lives, enrich students' lives, enrich family members' lives, uh, if you're a coach, your athletes' lives, and if you're an employer or a supervisor, how you supervise these lives. And um, so one of the ways you, you can do this is um, anytime you name what someone thinks is a presumed deficit as an asset, that will surprise them. Uh, um, so, so for instance, uh, I have dyslexia and I had a reading disability all my life. And then at some point in my life, when I was younger, uh, I used to read everything very slowly. I hated reading and I have to reread passages. And then someone said to me, wow, you're such a thorough reader. That surprised me. Right. And now I think of my dyslexia which forced me into my slow methodical reading as a superpower. Yep. My comprehension is great. And that was all from a moment of surprise because I thought that was a deficit. And this person named it as an asset. It surprised me It instantly created a new belief. And now when I read, I read proudly. I like reading and I do it with uh, a great deal of enthusiasm because my comprehension is so high. So uh, when you see a student or an athlete or um, whoever you're working with, and, and if, you, if they think that something is, is a deficit, all you do is you point out how that can be an asset. And that's, that's transformative, right? You, that, that changed you it forever. Did. It, it changed me. I can think of another example that changed me mm -hmm. is uh, I recently did a TED Talk and I was corresponding with a friend in uh, England who, who just saw my TED talk. Now, when I did my TED talk, the only problem, you know, when you do one, it's perfectly rehearsed and everything's organized. And when I watched mine, I thought, oh, you know what? I don't like the way I did my pauses. They seemed a little artificial and I don't know how I, if I did them correctly. Did I wait too long? Were they too short? And this friend from England wrote me back and said, hey, Mike, I just saw your TED talk. Wow, you sure use your silence as well. 
you're the master of the pies. Wow, that's great. Yeah, well, it surprised me. So I got that double hit. I got that phasic dopamine. Bang, pay attention, form a new belief. So now when I use my pauses, I use them strategically. I'm very comfortable with them. And uh, so th those are moments that change you when you have a presumed uh, deficit, which is actually an asset. So let me uh, tell you about Lori. Yeah. Lori told me the student. She was a uh, Lori told me the story. She was a graduate student I had, and she said um, when she was younger, yeah, working in the library. She was 13 years old, and she was writing a test, and she was writing it very, very slowly. And she always thought that her test taking was a form of uh, it, it indicated that she wasn't very smart that she had a lack of intelligence because everything took her so long. And so the other students were getting up and leaving and there she was feeling bad for herself, feeling anxious. And uh, she thought that her slowness was interfering with her ability to express her intelligence. It actually was a sign of low intelligence. And then the librarian walked by and said, hey, your slow attentive work really is a sign of grit. Keep it up, kid. People with grit make great students. Bang, right. that surprised her. Mm -hmm. And so she experienced that basic dopamine. So, so, and she now believes she has grit. Mm -hmm. So now when she writes tests or ever since that time, because she's a, she's a full grown adult now in a graduate class, but ever since that time, she said, she wrote her test intentionally, slowly with grit mm -hmm. because she believes now she's intelligence and grit is a form of intelligence. Wow, those moments really can change the way we see ourselves. And and we all know how powerful that dopamine is. You know, you talk about it like a double hit that we get during a moment of surprise. And we know about the connections to the motivation centers of the brain. But when did science discover the role of dopamine with surprise? Well, it was Wolfgang Schultz actually uh, out of Cambridge in 2017 won the, uh, the Brain Prize Award because he's the first one to put together the phasic dopamine and how that acts to uh, create that moment of what just happened and then instant belief formation. And uh, before that, we had no, we, we've always known that surprise was an error signal from a neurological point of view, but we just didn't know how it worked and how it how it changed beliefs instantly. Got it. That's, that's good to know the history behind it. So what about um, being startled versus surprised? Is there a difference? Like when someone comes up behind you and shouts your name, like startled, surprised, are they the same thing? Well, uh, they can seem like the same thing because both of them cause you to stop and immediately assess what's going on. Uh, a startle is a physiological response. It, it's, uh, it's your body's automatic reaction to loud noises, sudden movements, being touched suddenly. It's a physiological response. A uh, surprise is a emotional response and it's belief based. If you don't have a belief, you, you can't be surprised because a surprise is, 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 is a cognition that says, Whatever you believe isn't true, change it instantly. So while you can be startled if the, I see you have a door behind you and if a draft caused that door to slam suddenly, you would be startled, but it didn't change your belief. Right. Got it. Can surprise change somebody who's like really focused on something i don't know like i can't think of something right now but i've got a really strong belief can surprise change my belief dramatically that, that's a that's a really complex question and one i happen to get a lot and uh let's just use uh, let's say climate change or vaccinations pro or for as something like that's something that people currently have a strong belief about so let's look at um uh, climate change. And for instance, uh, we do know that if one person believes in climate change, the other person believes does not believe in man-made climate change, they can give each other all sorts of data that isn't going to change their views. Right. And so if, if you have firmly entrenched 
beliefs about something like that, they're not going to change with more information. Um, and, and that's because of what we know about certainty. Certainty is a feeling you have, but it's not based on data. Certainty is a feeling and you can't change feelings with more data, but you can change feelings with a surprise. So while you might not be able to change, convince somebody with your argument on data, um, they may find that they become surprised when they see something on their own that changes their mind. That's the only way it's going to change. Interesting, interesting. So have I missed anything about the power of surprise here? So you've given us quite a lot to think about. You've given some models of how we could use surprise for our students in the classroom. In the workplace, we could, you know, replicate this to make other people um, use their deficits as a strength, um, surprising them in that way, recreating a surprise that changes our beliefs. But what would, would you say would be some final thoughts to, for listeners to take away with on surprise? Well, let me leave you with an example with, which has all the elements in there that are important about how to deliver surprise strategically. And, uh, and that way your listeners can think, oh, oh, I know how to do this. I can use surprise strategically. So um, uh, here's an example that I like to use from time to time. Imagine that you're an employer and uh, you have a, a one of your employees doesn't think she learns protocols very quickly. So what you do is you call her into your office. And of course, when she comes into your office, she'll be nervous. She'll think, oh, oh she's going to get in trouble for not learning her protocol very quickly. Instead, you say, I, uh, I'd like the way you learn your protocol so thoroughly. I'm putting you in charge of the West Division. Thank you very much. Off you go back to work. Now, she goes back to work or he goes back to work with this, what just happened? And all of a sudden, learning your protocol slowly becomes learning them thoroughly. And if that comment surprised her, she gets uh, to, uh, phasic dopamine. The first phase is what just happened. Second phase is form a new belief. You learn your protocols thoroughly. So that would motivate her to do what she was not doing, would you say? I, I would say it's not gonna change anything for her except that her belief mm -hmm. that she learns protocols thoroughly because if you believe you learn your protocols slowly, you're going to learn them anxiously and your anxiety is going to interfere with how you learn your protocols. If you believe you learn your pro protocols thoroughly, you're going to learn them confidently and that's going to improve how you learn your protocols. And it's not going to change the speed with which you will learn them, but you will learn them thoroughly. And all now, what your listeners need to know um, is when you surprise somebody with a comment, number one, state a fact, not praise. Because if you praise someone, gee, I like the way you learn your protocols thoroughly, that sounds a little smarmy and is easily dismissed as praise. But if you say it as a fact, I like the way you learn your protocols thoroughly, if you say it as a fact, just like uh, your, your superintendent said to you that you're, you're an educator, mm -hmm. that fact gets digested. It's easier to follow that conviction. Mm -hmm. Another uh, uh, second thing that they need to know is do not, ex if you surprise somebody, do not explain why you surprised them or do not explain what your surprise means because part of the effectiveness of a comment from a surprise is when the recipient has to make sense of it themselves. The act of making sense of it actually entrenches it into part of your neurological memory and your belief system. So by 
dismissing by putting the phone, picking up the phone and dismissing her from your office, she has to go outside and make sense of it. Making sense of it means you own it. Yeah, that makes sense. Name it to tame it, right? Once you <laughs> know what it is, then you bring it to light. Well, for anyone who wants to find out where your book is, it's on Amazon and you've got a 30% discount, right? We can put a little link with your, your code and your offer to give 30% off. When does the book come out? Uh, the book's going to come out on September 15, 2021. Got it. So we're a little bit of ways, but we'll just keep promoting this and put the link up there for you. And for anyone who wants to learn more, they can go to michaelroussel.com. I'll put all the links. Um, are you on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn? Are you everywhere, Michael? Uh, I'm pretty much everywhere, right? You can find me on all the social media. I, uh, I don't do much on in Instagram. though. Got it. But uh, anyway, I want to thank you so much for speaking with me today, Michael, and sharing your decades of research of formative events to help us all impact change, transform those around us, whether we're a teacher in the classroom looking to impact our students or for those in the workplace, we can understand how we can use the element of surprise to influence others. And it, we know that we could positively influence others and then watch them flourish with an understanding of this unexpected. Thank you so much for your time today, Michael. It was a pleasure and I'm looking forward to watching all your other podcasts. I'm a big fan. Thanks so much. And you, I'm a fan of your work and especially love surprises. <laughs>